Welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Ira Gershwin. Broadway in the early 1920s had two main forms of entertainment, musical entertainment, operetta and the review. Operettas like Rose Marie, Countess Maritza, and the Student Prince of Heidelberg. These shows, as the name implies, had big, grand, arching operatic singing, exotic ro locales, and, rom and romance. Across the street, so to speak, was the review. The George White scandals, the Earl Carroll vanity, vanities, the music box review, and of course, the master of them all, Ziegfeld Follies. These were loosely based shows with topical humor, skits, comedians, songs, and dances. And of course, every show had to have a chorus of beautiful young women scantily dressed. So the world that George and Ira Gershwin came into was very different than what they were doing. They wanted to integrate the musical take a story and bring the songs together and make it one complete show. The year was 1927, the year that Charles Lindbergh flew across the Atlantic and the producers, Aarons and Friedley, wanted a new musical. So they contracted Ira and George Gershwin to write a musical called Smarty. After a long run in London and an out of town tour, Fred and Adele Astaire were ready to be back on Broadway and they were going to be the stars of this show. Now, the out-of-town tryouts were very dangerous. The tour was extended many times. The director was changed. Cast members were changed. George and Ira wrote over 25 songs. About half of them were thrown out. By the time the show landed on Broadway, the title had changed from Smarty to Funny Face, and it was a great success. And it needed to be a success because the producers, Aarons and Friedley, had built a brand new theater, and they named it the Alvin Theater, and they wanted to put this hit show in there. The Alvin Theater was named after Aarons and Friedley. Alex. Aarons and Vinton Freely. They took the first parts of their names and put it together and called it the Alvin Theater. Now, if you've been up to 52nd Street, you know that that theater is there, but it's called the Neil Simon Theater. In the 1980s, the Nederlander organization renamed it the Neil Simon Theater after the successful run of Brighton Beach Memoirs. Funny Face. One of my favorite songs from this show is called Swonderful. And let's be clear, it's not called It's Wonderful, but Swonderful. Ira was always annoyed when singers tried to correct his words. Now this song, Swonderful, was writ sung by Adele Astaire. And this kind of contracting of the words, this colloquial style, was something that Ira was known for. He had used it earlier in a show called Americana. The song was called Sunny Disposition. Listen to the lyrics. It really doesn't pay to be a gloomy pill. It's absolutely ridic, positively sill. For life can be delish with a sunny disposition. Ira liked that casual, conversational quality. And he used it again in Swonderful. Here's the verse. Don't mind telling you, in my humble fash, that you thrill me through with a tender pash. When you said you care, imagine my emotion. I knew then and there permanent devotion. You made all other boys seem blah. Just you alone filled me with ah. Now, for the refrain or the chorus, George wrote a melody that has these descending thirds, wa-ba-da, ya-ba-ba. And in order not to make it sound repetitive or boring, he reharmonized those each time. Ira decided to use that sort of contraction and because he felt like it was a sliding quality. Swonderful, smarvelous, you should care for me, sawful nice, paradise. 
So let's just sit back, just take a minute, and listen to the original performer of this song, Adele Astaire, singing a bit of the chorus or the refrain to Swonderful. So let's move to 1930, kind of the end of an era. I want to give you a little bit of facts. Did you know that five shows that George and Ira wrote were all two-word titles? 1925, Tiptoes. 1926, OK. 1927, Funny Face. 1928, Treasure Girl. And 1930, Girl Crazy. George really felt those two word titles were six, were going to bring him luck. Now let's talk about Girl Crazy. It starred Ginger Rogers, 19 years old. The interesting thing, at Ginger's audition in George's penthouse apartment, the one thing that she remembers about the audition is that George could transpose any song to any key on the spot. I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, a supporting character was Ethel Agnes Zimmerman. Ethel Agnes Zimmerman was 21 years old and a former stenographer from Astoria, Queens. She changed her name, yep, you know it, to Ethel Merman. Ethel had three songs, Boy, What Love Has Done To Me, Sam and Delilah, and I Got Rhythm, which is what I want to talk about right now. I Got Rhythm caused Ira quite a lot of trouble. It took him weeks to find the lyric. And what he was trying to do was rhyme the chorus. And uh, what he used, like a lot of other songwriters use, is something called a dummy lyric. And you can't be a dummy to use a dummy lyric. It helps you remember a song. So here's an example of a dummy lyric that Ira used for I Got Rhythm. Roly poly, eating solely, ravioli, better watch your diet or bust. Another one he tried out was lunch or dinner, you're a sinner, please get thinner, losing all that fat is a must. He decided that that lyric, that rhyming lyric sounded too sing-songy. So he moved after about two or three weeks to a non-rhyming lyric. And this is the dummy lyric for that. Just go forward, don't look backward, and soon you'll be winding up ahead of the game. And he said, that's it. And he came, with, came up with, I got rhythm, I got music, I got my man who could ask for anything more. Now, dummy lyrics are really kind of fascinating. There was a musical called No, No, Nanette, written by Vincent Humans and Irving Caesar. You might remember that Irving Caesar was the lyric writer for George's very first hit called Swanee. And there was a dummy lyric that they worked on for quite a while that ended up being the song's t lyrics. You might know it. T for two, two for T, you for me, and me for you. T for two, yes. They ended up using that. So here's an interesting fact about T for two. What does that mean? Did you know that T for Two was originally shouted by hawkers on the streets in 18th century England who wanted to attract business by lowering the price of a pot of tea? Now, I, I want to stay with dummy lyrics one more time because I what just a little bit longer because I think this is interesting. Do you know the famous song called Yesterday by John Lennon? There is a dummy lyric that they worked with before they came up with Yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. Now, I bet you want to hear it, don't you? Listen to this one. Scrambled eggs, oh my baby, how I love your legs. Quite the lyric, right? So, I got rhythm. Not I've got rhythm, but I got rhythm. George, Ira wanted that aggressive, punchy feeling. I got rhythm. 
He also used alliteration. You remember that? That's when the repeating of sounds over and over. I got rhythm. I got music. I got my man who could ask for anything more. Don't think that those M's came in willy-nilly. They were put in there very specifically. Two more things I want to tell you about this song. First of all, remember 1924, Lady Be Good? Fascinating rhythm. That song was about the pulse of New York City causing an addictive quality that the singer said, please stop pescering me. Well, by 1930, rhythm meant you had your mojo. I got rhythm, I got music, I got my man. So now the singer is in control of the rhythm. One more thing I'd like to tell you about Girl Crazy. Listen to the who was in the band playing in the pit. Names from Who's Who's in Jazz. Benny Goodman, Gene Krupa, Glenn Miller, Jack Teagarden, and Jimmy Dorsey. How could that show not be fabulous? So that's my spotlight on Ira Gershwin, a fabulous lyric writer. I think I'm gonna move on to someone else. And I bet you'd like to know who it is. So why don't you subscribe? Why don't you like my show? And perhaps write a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to finish out now with Ethel Merman singing, I Got Rhythm. Thanks a lot. Who could ask for anything more? Who could ask for anything more?